Hey guys, my name is Farhan, and I'm going to talk to you about one of the hottest topics in computer science today, machine learning. But more specifically, I'm going to talk to you about how we use machine learning with Pier 1 Meta to drive our workload planner. Workload planning turns out to be one of the hardest things to do in storage. We usually plan around two different axes, the first one being capacity, which turns out to be pretty linear in its response, so we use simple models for it, and the second one is performance. Now for performance, you could think, well, what if I just use something like CPU? Well, modern storage systems do a lot of processing offline. When you don't have I.O. running, we do things like improve the dedupe of the data you already have stored on disk, as well as improve the metadata layout so that you have less latency in the future. So just using CPU as a proxy doesn't quite work. What about something like the SSD bandwidth? Well, the same background tasks that we talked about that take CPU also contend for SSD bandwidth. So really, none of these tend to be a holistic answer for what performance looks like on a modern storage system. So the first thing that we decided to do here on the data science team is say, how can we combine all of these internal measures of an array and come up with a simple number that tells us what the performance looks like? And that's how we came up with the idea of load which is a simple percentage between 0 to 100. And it intends to capture all of the interaction between these variables. So now that we have load, it gives us a simple way to understand performance on the array. But how do we make it useful for our customers? What customers really want to know is, if I had a particular load in the past, what is my load going to look like in the future? A week from now, a month from now, even six months from now. To answer that question, we need to first understand how load actually correlates with the workload that's running on the array. And let's dive a little bit deeper into what the workload really means. The workload on an array typically is characterized by things like your read bandwidth, things like your write IOPS, your override pattern, and hundreds of other similar things that together define what a workload really means. In Pier 1, we call this the workload DNA. So the first thing that we need to do is try to understand how a particular workload corresponds to the load on our array. Now, traditionally, you would look to modeling systems to try to answer this problem. You try to come up with a complex transfer function that correlates all of these with the load. And that becomes very hard as the number of features in this workload DNA scales up. So we took a different approach. We said, what if we utilize our biggest asset? And that turns out to be the data that we have in Pure One, and then use machine learning to understand this transfer function from the data itself. To be able to predict load using machine learning, we have to do two things. The first thing, as we talked about, was taking these workload DNA features and being able to predict load from them. How do we do that? Well, it all starts with the data. Pure One collects telemetry data from all of our arrays in the field, real time which means that we have a data set in Pier 1 with trillions of data points, where each of these points consists of what the workload looked like at that point of time, and also what the load ended up looking like on the array. And we have trillions of data points. For those of you familiar with machine learning, you'll quickly recognize this as a labeled training data set. And what having all this data enables us to do is now apply machine learning and get out what we call a model. 
And today we utilize state-of-the-art machine learning and we pick the model that gives us the best error in being able to predict the load. But what does the model actually do? Well, the goal of the model is to be able to predict, given a particular workload DNA, which we call the features, what would the load have looked like? And remember, this workload DNA is hypothetical. It's going to be in the future. So we've built a predictor for load given a particular workload DNA. But that doesn't quite get us to being able to project and predict load in the future. To do that, we have to actually project our numbers into future. And for that, we turn to time series analysis. We take all of the workload DNA features, things like the read bandwidth and so on, and we analyze what the time series looks like. These analyses include things like removing the seasonality at different frequencies. This includes weekly, monthly, daily trends even. Once we remove these seasonalities, we find the underlying trend in this time series and use that combined with the seasonalities to project forward what this feature would look like. We do this for all of the features in our workload DNA. So now what we have is a model for projecting all of our workload forward in time, and also a model for taking the workload and being able to predict load. And once we combine these two models, we get the answer that we were looking for, which is a projection of load into the future. Having an accurate projection for load enables our customers to better plan for growth in their environments and also helps them drive consolidation which maximizes the usage they get out of the storage that they own. The workload planner is just the beginning of our journey with machine learning in Pier 1. Going forward, we're hoping to answer questions like, what if you were to switch out the controller from an M50 to an M70? How much more headroom do I really get in terms of performance? What if I were to clone one of the workloads I have running on this box? How many more can I really fit? These and other questions are things that we are excited to work on in the data science team at Pure.